Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, my dear friends here on YouTube. Welcome to Albion Brethren Church. And it's good to, s to be in your presence once again. Thank you for joining us today. I pray that this week has found you well, found you healthy, and found you uh, feeling the Lord's presence about you always, no matter what you're going through. Um, I know it's trying times right now for a lot of people. There's a lot going on in the world right now. And uh, sometimes it feels like the, the very ground underneath you is, is slipping away from you. But uh, remember to stand upon the rock of Jesus. Because that is sure footing. That is solid ground. He is solid ground. And... Uh, Ensure that you trust in him, in him alone. And seek his face, seek his presence, seek his glory. Seek to know him more. If we're focused more on him, we'll be much less focused on the other things of this world. Things that we have, in reality, no control over. So, uh, that's why we offer a time of prayer. Because we appeal to the one who can do something, who can help us through whatever we're going through. So if you have anything that's praiseworthy, anything you want to share that, uh, that you're thankful for, please send that in. And, uh, and we will celebrate with you. And if there's anything that you need that, uh, you know, any kind of problems, health issues, relationship problems, whatever it might be, and, uh, and you need prayer for that, Please send it our way. Text us, email us, give us a call, and we will pray with you. We'll add you to our prayer list, and uh, we will keep you uh, completely in our hearts and our minds as we offer up our prayers to the Lord. Because we know it is only from Him, it's only from Christ, that we find our help. It's from nowhere else. And, and prayerfully, You've been finding that out, as as I have been, that uh, that more and more I need to depend on Christ more, and myself less. So share your prayers, share your requests, share your praises, and uh, and we can lift them up together. All right. Okay. Now we're going to start with as we always do with our responsive reading. I'm going to invite you to read along with me. We're looking at the. Uh, Paul's letter to the Romans. I know we uh, we read from it last week, and we're gonna we're gonna continue on with it because this is this is a, a just a marvelous letter, and it has so much to teach us as as followers of Jesus Christ. So we're looking at Romans chapter ten, starting with verse eight, and we're gonna go down to verse thirteen. Okay, so join me if you will, Romans ten, verse eight through thirteen. And Paul writes, But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all, and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. May Almighty God bless this, the reading of his holy word. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Lord, we give you thanks and praise, Lord, for all that you have done for us. Lord, we thank you, O oh Lord, for, for uh, just the blessings that we have received from you, O oh Lord. Even in the midst of, of this crazy world, dear Lord, where it seems like we never know what's going to happen from day to day, but Lord, we know that you are near and you bless us. You bless your people. Uh, you, you, you bless us in abundance. 
And we give you thanks for that, Lord. We give you thanks for answered prayers. We give you thanks for, uh, for, for all of the goodness that, that you have given to us. And just as we thank you for all of the, the, wonder, the wonderful ways you've blessed us, Lord, we also offer up to you our prayers and supplications, those things that weigh heavily upon our hearts, uh, those who are near and dear to us, dear Lord, who may be going through issues of, of all sorts of problems, health issues, um, surgeries, maybe financial problems. Maybe, Lord, we're going through some of those things ourselves, oh Lord, and more. And Lord, we know that there's nothing, dear Lord, that, we, that you can't handle. There's nothing that we can't come to you about. So Lord, we lift up these things to you. Lord, even those unspoken things, dear Lord, those unspoken prayer requests, oh Lord, that, uh, that, that go unsaid, but Lord, you read the very depths of our hearts. You know our hearts before we even speak it, dear Lord. So we lift them up to you, oh Lord, and we trust in you, O Lord Jesus. And we pray, dear Lord, and we, we, we seek your glory and the glorification of your name above all names. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, going on to our discussion today, I want you to think about this word, surrender. Okay, Surrender is a... Uh, there, maybe there's a lot of things that come to your mind. Maybe you think of, when you think of surrender, you think of uh, troops on a battlefield who are, who are, maybe they're hopelessly surrounded, they have no chance of winning, and they so they put their hands up and say, I surrender, raise the white flag, and, and uh, lay their weapons down, and, uh, and, and just, just give up to the enemy. Um, Perhaps you have other ideas of what surrender means. Um, surrendering is uh, its a vulnerable position to be in. And it's not always the most comfortable position to be in. As a matter of fact, it's, it's more often not, not comfortable. And it requires much of us. Uh, it requires us to, to give up things. It is a position of humility is a position of submission but this is what our lord our, the lord our god is seeking from for us that's what he wants that's our proper attitude towards him is to surrender all to him and i'm going to read to you a, uh, a story that's probably familiar to many of you and it's a story that has not been without its controversies over the years people trying to make sense of what in the world's going on and it's a story of Abraham uh, being told by the Lord God to sacrifice his, his only son, Isaac. So if you'll turn with me to Genesis chapter 22, starting with verse 1, I'm going to read down to verse 14. Okay, Genesis 22, 1 through 14. Okay, and I invite you to, to uh, read along with me if you'd like, or if you just want to read along in your Bible or your favorite app. Uh, however you engage scripture I encourage you to read along with me even just following along uh, just we, we, we need to engage scripture it's so important we must do this as, as followers of Christ in order to know him more and to seek him more we need to know his word so starting with verse 1 Genesis 22 sometime later God tested Abraham he said to him Abraham here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey, where I and the boy will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. 
As two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father? Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar and there arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place, The Lord Will Provide. And to this day it is said, On the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. May Almighty God bless this, the reading of his holy word. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, dear precious Son, dear Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you for the grace outpoured that, that, that you outpoured for us, dear Lord, through your death and your glorious resurrection. And one day, Lord, we know you will, you will come again in glory. And Lord, until that day, dear Lord, we will continue to strive to become more and more like you, to seek you out, dear Lord, to follow along the path you've laid out for us that leads to you, towards Christ's likeness, to be more like you, to, to seek your glory, to seek your face, to become more like you. As we surrender more and more of ourselves, as we surrender ourselves, dear Lord, our selfish ways, and take on more and more of your likeness, of becoming more like you, O Lord. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise. In your name we pray, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. With God, it's all or nothing. There's no halfway with God. Okay. It, um, and sometimes God asks some very hard things of us. God asked the unthinkable of Abraham to sacrifice his only son Isaac. Uh, and now, I I thought I've always thought from the very beginning that this was a really puzzling request of God, because this was the son from which a great nation would come forth. God God promised that this was the son, this was the prom the heir who would, you know, from 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 him would spring forth. Uh, a, a nation, you know, a great nation, the the nation of of Israel, was promised through Isaac. So I always thought that was that was interesting, or puzzling, really, that God would ask Abraham to do this. And it does not seem as Sarah was aware. of of this command by God she's not she's not mentioned here not at least not in this section she's not mentioned at all so um, so we know that she wasn't she wasn't she didn't seem to be privy to what was going on and what God had asked uh, I, I think I, I think we can probably guess or even, or at least speculate why Sarah was not involved in it. it was probably because Sarah would, maybe Sarah would have drawn the line and said, "No, I, I can't sacrifice my son. I can't do this." And perhaps that's why we don't we don't know the reason why. A God does not reveal it to her, as far as we know, and as far as we know from the text, Abraham never mentions it. But why this test of Abraham's obedience? why this test um, I think if we start if we because this becomes this is such a puzzling episode within within scripture and we can we can really get down go down a lot of rabbit trails if we're not careful and I think it will it leads us 
sometimes can lead us in ways that we really shouldn't go. Um, I think maybe that what what's going on here is more than a mere test. Yes, it's a test, but what kind of test? What is God testing? You see, God knew Abraham idolized Isaac, the promised son, the son from which this whole nation of Israel would rise up, the promised son. So you know Abraham, Abraham and God knew that Abraham loved this boy dearly because God even says so. This is your son, your only son, the one you love. I think to the point where Abraham idolized him. He, he, Isaac became more than just a son. He became this living embodiment of this promise that God had made. And I think perhaps there was a real danger of that, of, of that idolizing of his son replacing Abraham's love for God himself. See, this was a test of Abraham's heart. Was it God alone upon the throne of his heart? Or was Isaac on that throne of, uh, on the th throne, throne of his heart as well? if you follow the Lord your God we cannot have there's only room for one on the throne of your heart who's it going to be what is it going to be we're all going to be we're all going to be enslaved by something we're all going to submit to something we're all going to turn our will and ourselves over to something whether it's a, it's our own desires and will you know we're going to be enslaved by that whether it's you know we are our will and our happiness and everything is wrapped up in some other person we're going to be enslaved to them we're going to be enslaved to that relationship or like with Abraham's case is that he idolized Isaac and he was that idolization of his son was starting to enslave him there's only room for one on the throne of your heart. Only one. So, to Mount Moriah they were sent. And uh, Mor that the word Moriah the word Moriah means God will provide or appear. Okay? That's 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 what uh, that's what it means in the Hebrew. So Abraham witnesses the mountain in the distance. He sees the mountain. He can see it clearly with his eyes. He knows what he's going to have to do up there. He's going to have to sacrifice his idol. He's going to have to do something about the idol that is in his heart, which unfortunately is his own very own son. So he has plenty of time to agonize over the task. This was agonizing. This was brutal. You know, he, every step they took, he knew what, what, what they were getting closer to this this thing he had to do. And I'm, you know, thinking as a father who has a son, you know, perhaps doubts are swirling his mind. I know I would. You know, even even following the Lord God with with all my heart and soul, you know, God asking something like this. Perhaps he asked something like, how could God ask this of me? What will the promise God made me about becoming a father of a great nation? How will that become fulfilled? How will that, that promise God made, how will that be fulfilled? It can't be fulfilled without Isaac. We need Isaac for that to be fulfilled. I'm too old to have, uh, have any more children. God, aren't you destroying your your own efforts and your own promise? Aren't aren't, aren't you breaking your own promise by doing this? By, by by asking me or commanding me to do this? Yet Abraham ob obeyed without verbal complaint. And you might ask, why? Why didn't he? Why do, why didn't we see Abraham struggle with this more than what we see? Now we don't like I said, we don't know what was going on inside Abraham's heart and mind. Um, 
but if he truly did idolize Isaac, which it's it really seems to be, and that seems to be what what the test was all about, I'm sure he had these things going through his mind and through his heart, but he did not verbalize them, and uh, perhaps perhaps. Perhaps Abraham's mind went a different way. Maybe he didn't think the way, because see, we tend to want to think of these people as like us. And well, they, they, while they are human, and they were mere humans like us, and they made mistakes, they sinned, but their 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 cultural cultures were very different, much di much different than our own culture. Different cultural expectations, different cultural obligations you see the very unfortunate fact was that the ancient world was full of human sacrifice the gods from the land which Abraham came from the, the, the land which he had come from Ur of the Chaldeans it was a, a land that that expected such practices and, and many of the nations that surrounded it, they pr practiced things like this, uh, human sacrifice. Often they would sacrifice their children to their gods for so, just so that they would have a good harvest. So the, the unfortunate reality was, well, human sacrifice was expected of the gods. And Abraham's thinking, well, maybe Yahweh well, he's not asking anything different than any of the other gods that I knew of, what they would have asked for. So, okay, I guess I guess this is yeah, this is part of what's to be expected. So maybe that's why he didn't complain because he's maybe he's been expecting this all along. Even though Isaac was the promised son, still sacrificing to the gods was was something that was done in the ancient world. And perhaps Abraham expected such a request from God since Abraham originally came from a culture that engaged in such practice. So so maybe that was maybe that's part of what was going through Abraham's mind. Maybe he expected this. Yeah, I, I'm I'm sure it didn't make it any easier. He I'm sure he did not he he was I'm sure he was despondent over the idea inside that he had to do this. Why to the mount which by its very definition, its very name means God will provide or God will Maybe Abraham's faith went that deep. I mean, he was a man of great faith. So the tension of the situation continues to build. Isaac does not protest. He doesn't even make a big deal about it. He, he seems to just 
go along with it. You know, you, we talk about the faith of, of Abraham, but what about the faith of Isaac, who does exactly what his father tells him, even when his father says, well, son, you're, you're going to have to you're going to have to lay down on top of the wood there, bud. You know, because God has asked me to do this. You asked about the sacrifice, my son. Well, the brutal, honest truth, son, is you are the sacrifice. I believe that made the whole affair more agonizing. The true character of this son of promise really was revealed as he just he went right along with his father. He he understood. And not only it showed that the great respect and faith that Isaac had in his father, but that he had in the Lord God as well. And he knew that well if if if, if Dad heard a message from the Lord and if the Lord told him to do this, well then I'm gonna go along with it too. Remarkable faith. But this is Abraham's fiery trial. And who will win out? Will he actually be able to go through it? Will he actually be able to do what it takes to remove the idol from his heart's throne and allow the Lord God himself to reign there, unchallenged supreme? Was he going to do what it took? Was he able to do what it took? And at the last moment, and with much relief of Abraham and Isaac, God stops Abraham's hand. Stop, Abraham, Abraham. Do not touch the boy. Do not harm the boy. Now I know. You see, God reveals something to Abraham. I think there's many things going on here. Many tests going on here. Not only Abraham's faith, but also testing who really sits at the throne of his heart, but also God showing in a very, in a very real way what kind of God he is and how he is different than these false gods of these nations where that Abraham was so familiar with, especially even from his home nation. God is showing him, look, I am not these gods. I do not ask of such things as these gods. I am the Lord your God, I am the one true God, and there is no other gods before me. I am one, and I do not, I will not ask you to do this. I'm showing you, Abraham, my heart, that I am not like these gods. Perhaps it was as, as the great theologian A.W. Tozer so eloquently noted, God talking to Abraham saying I only wanted to remove him Isaac I only wanted to remove Isaac from the temple of your heart that I might reign unchallenged there I only wanted to remove Isaac from the temple of your heart so that I might reign unchallenged there Abraham was changed that day clearly Abraham was no longer concerned about possessing things. I think what Abraham learned that day was that Isaac is not mine. Just as all that I have is not mine. It doesn't belong to me. Isaac does not belong to me. Yes, he's my son and I love him very much, but he doesn't belong to me. He was given to me, promised to me by the Lord, and he ultimately belongs to the Lord. He does not, it is not his place to sit upon the throne of my heart. The only possession I have is the almighty, ever-living Father. That's it. So the question for us today is, you know, for number one, what can we learn from this? I think we can learn a great deal. First, does the does Christ reign unchallenged in our hearts? Does Jesus Christ, our living, saving Lord, reign unchallenged 
in the on the upon the throne of our hearts does he next second of all what do we really possess what is ours if we find ourselves clinging to things that is not a good place for a believer to be and especially especially because I think we could all say well yeah things are just things but but the problem for us for as Christians for as followers of Jesus the real problem comes when our greatest treasures that we grip so tightly are our family and our friends and those who are near and dear to our hearts that's where we can really run into a real problem when we idolize them over over the Lord our God why do we tend to grip so tightly to things and people we think we possess why do we do that I think a lot of it because I and I'm I'm speaking for myself and I'm revealing something about myself my own heart but but maybe it resonates maybe this resonates with you too is out of fear of losing them I'm sure many of you out there have had come close to losing someone close to the, whom you dearly love or maybe you have lost them through sickness or or whatever But why do we fear if we trust everything to the Lord's care? If we truly trust everything to the Lord's care, including especially our loved ones, then why do we fear? Why do we keep putting them back on the throne of our hearts and keep them there because, because, the, because we, we think they're safe there? We can keep an eye on them there. We make sure nothing bad will happen to them there because they're, 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 and they become our, they become our number one focus over Christ let's not make the mistake that Abraham made with Isaac we have to remember Jesus did not come to destroy but to save when we look upon him when we submit to him and surrender all to him it's to his friendly heart it's to his friendly gracious loving giving heart merciful heart Surrender to all to him because they will be safe under his care. They'll be safer under his care than under your care. Now that doesn't mean we don't we just we stop caring about those we love and we don't look. No, of course not. But everything has its place. And that includes our loved ones. We love them very much, but but Christ must come first. Because we have to remember, it's from Christ from which everything comes. Everything flows. All life and love and mercy and grace, that all comes from Him. And if we put something above Him, upstream of Him, then we're, we're going to have a, a, a very stunted view of, of life and of faith and, and everything else because we're trusting in something or someone else other than Christ. You know, so we can lose something or someone else. We can lose those th them. Cling to and place the one. Submit to the one. Surrender to the one whom you cannot lose. Who will never leave you or forsake you. You know, even when we lose loved ones, and we all do. We all do. And we all will. Even when we lose loved ones... If they have been surrendered over to Jesus, we know then where they are and we know we will see them again in eternity. Remember, Jesus said so. He says, look, trust in me. He's like, I, I go to prepare a place for you. If it was not so, I, would not, I, would have, I wouldn't have told you. But where I go, it's so that you can be there with me also with all those faithful ones who have gone on before us. We have to realize in reality that we possess nothing. There's nothing we possess except Jesus. We surrender all to, we must surrender all to Jesus. But you may say, how do I do that? How do I surrender all to Jesus? I want to do that, but how do I do that? How's it possible? First, the first thing, the first thing, the first step, 
go to Jesus in prayer and be honest with him and with yourself no excuses be honest with him with the things that you idolize over him believe me nothing you say is going to surprise him he already knows this but it's it's important for you to admit it just like for Abraham it was important for him to understand and realize this about himself it wasn't so much that that God needed to know what Abraham's heart God knew his heart but Abraham needed to experience this Abraham needed to see these things Abraham needed to make the change from idolizing his son to, to go going back to idolizing the Lord God so go to Jesus in prayer go to a, a, a special place a place where you can be alone and you know close the door and and just be honest with yourself okay with yourself be, be honest with yourself that acknowledge these things are going on within yourself and acknowledge to Christ to admit it yes Lord I, I I've idolized things above you I've idolized I, I've idolized other people above you because I'm afraid Lord I'm afraid of losing I'm afraid of losing them I'm afraid of well, my whole life falling apart And then offer complete surrender of everything to him. Hold nothing back. Our lives and what we surrender to is serious. Because we will, like I said before, we will surrender ourselves to something. Okay, we will. If it's not to Christ, it'll be to something or someone else. And Lord help us if it's something else other than Christ. What we surrender to is serious. So to let us surrender and submit ourselves to Christ, because that when we resent, we when we surrender all to Him, we suddenly have everything. Because Christ is the source of all things, of all blessing, of all mercy, of all grace. He remember He came to save, not to destroy. Ask God to remove the things that sit upon the throne of your heart that has no business being there. Only Christ belongs there. There's another quote from Tozer, and I, I just I just thought it was just too good to not share. I was I was going to try to put it in my own words, but I thought there, there there's no way I can make this sound better than Tozer himself. So this was from his book, The Pursuit of God. And Tozer said that the ancient curse will not go out painlessly. The tough old miser within us will not lie down and die in obedience to our command. He must be torn out of our heart like a plant from the soil. He must be extracted in agony and blood like a tooth from a jaw. He must be expelled from our soul by violence as Christ expelled the money changers from the temple. If we would know God in growing intimacy, we must go this way of renunciation our whole future will be conditioned by the choice we make. Please keep in mind that our whole future, our eternity is, is decided by, is conditioned by the choice we make. Who is going to sit upon the throne of your heart? Who are you going to surrender to? I pray it be Christ. I pray it be Christ. Just I pray for myself always that that let Christ reign upon my heart above all things because only then can I love my loved ones the, the best way then uh, only then can I appreciate the things I've been given the best way uh, every, uh, because otherwise it's stunted it's 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 a a mere copy it's a mimicry it's not the real thing because all love flows from him so surrender to him. Trust in him. Like that old hymn. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my precious Savior. I surrender all. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, dear Holy Spirit, Lord, thank you so much for your word, for your grace. Lord, help us to always to surrender to you, Lord, and to you alone. To remove the things from our hearts, dear Lord, that have no business being there. 
that only you belong to our heart in our hearts and dear lord if you sit upon the throne of our hearts then our relationships everything will be will be well informed we will we will we will love others in the proper way that we're supposed to everything will will be the way it's supposed to be our love for others our our, our appreciation for the for the things that we've been blessed with everything so lord we ask you in your precious name dear lord to come to us as we seek you lord we we surrender to you we submit to you we surrender all to you that includes our loved ones that includes all of the possessions we have the possessions we think we have all of these things all of them every single one of them because has been a blessing from you has come from you and belongs to you so we give you thanks lord as we put our trust in you you the god who has come to save in your name we pray father son holy spirit amen now my dear friends uh, make sure you uh, check out the description box below for this week's featured video from one of the wonderfully talented people here on YouTube. And we, we pray that uh, it blesses you and it kind of stays with you throughout the week. And now, my dear friends, may God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with your spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. Love and serve the Lord. Amen.